Today on The Joy of Editing, I'll show you how to get a shallower depth of field using Photoshop's Depth Blur Neural Filter. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm pulling out the Depth blur neural filter in photoshop i've worked with this before on a video but i want to reintroduce it to you today i'm a really big fan of shallow depth of field and blur in general so i have this image and then i have this iphone image that i think will benefit from that shallow depth of field look but we're going to start with this one first and then we'll move on to the iphone image to find the filter, come up to Filters, click on Filter in the menu, and then find Neural Filters and click on that. And then you're going to find the Depth Blur Neural Filter right here in this Photography category. So click on this. And then you'll notice you have this toggle switch here. So click on the toggle switch. That'll activate the Depth Blur Filter. Now it's processing on the machine right now and it's done. And you can see the background and the foreground have gone out of focus giving me that depth blur shallow depth of field look and already that's quite an improvement now you can see a before and after if you click this button right here click it you'll see the original and click it again now you'll see what the blur looks like and i think that looks good now i want you to notice here right now focus subject is checked on so when that's checked on and i believe that's checked on by default it finds the subject in the image and focuses that area and then the other areas it takes out of focus. And I want you to notice something else. This works with something called a depth map. Right now, see this checkbox right here? It says output depth map only. Now you can create depth maps in here and I have other videos showing you how to do that, which is really good. You can use these in other blur filters, but we're only focusing on this neural filter today. So we'll save that for another time. But if you check this on, you could see what the depth map looks like. You see you have different shades of gray here. This is your subject right there. It's all one color of gray. And so that's the area that has been picked for focus. And then all these other shades of gray and black will get different amounts of focus or blur. So that is how it kind of figures it out. The light area in the background will get a lot of blur. Again, this area of gray here will get no blur whatsoever. The black area in the front will also get a lot of blur. And then the shades of gray in between will get various amounts of blur. I just wanted you to understand how that all works. So now let me go ahead and check off output to depth map. And then I'll show you some more things about adjusting this filter. So now you know whenever focus subject is checked on, it is going to find the subject and lock that into focus. However, I don't usually like to use it this way, so I usually uncheck this, and I'll show you how I like to use it. Now, you could adjust this focal distance here. There's a plane of focal area here, and I, what I want you to notice is, notice the girl's face here. As I start to drag this to the right, you'll notice her face starts coming into focus. I don't like to use this method here because it's kind of hard to really determine where that focus area is. But see, I could keep dragging along here and finally find it right there. So I don't really use this focal distance adjustment too often. What I like to do is see here where it says click to edit focal point. See the little crosshairs here. Just go over her eye and click and it finds that focal distance for you right there. So you know this eye is definitely going to be in focus. And that's important on a portrait or a person's face. You really want to have their eyes in focus. So... That's why I picked that area there. Now, if you look at this button here, focal range, think of this as the depth of field setting. In other words, when it's the whole way to the left, you have the most shallowest depth of field where you have less things in focus. Okay, so notice the image as I start to move this to the right. Now, it takes a few seconds for it to go ahead and update itself. But do you notice how more areas have come in focus here? So I have less of a shallow depth of field and I could get a lot of areas in focus if I drag it the whole way over to the right. You see that? It's almost as if the effect's not even being added. But if you really want that shallow depth of field, like simulating like, a, like an F2 or a F3, 2.8, somewhere in there, where you get a lot of shallow depth of field, 
you probably want to keep this focal range over to the left here. But again, you can adjust it to various amounts here. In fact, I may just take it over to the right just a little bit because I think that looks a little more natural and I like that. And again, don't forget, you can click this button right here. You can see the original and then click it again. And now you can see what your focal blur looks like. And I think that looks really good. I may give it slightly less focal range, maybe right about here. Now there's another thing that we can do and that is blur strength. Okay, right now it's at 50. You could cut this back to the left and give it less blur. Or you could take it the whole way to the right and give it the maximum amount of blur like that, which probably looks unnatural. So you want to find a realistic point of blur and maybe somewhere like right around here, like, you know, 67, 68%. I think that looks really good. Now, there's a haze slider here. You can add some haze to the image. If I start to drag this to the right, you see that it gets, starts to get that little bit of a hazy look, which can look kind of nice. So sometimes you may want to add a little bit of haze. And in this image, I think just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit goes a long way. So I think something like that, that little bit of haze really works on this image here. Now you can adjust the temperature and tint. I don't usually mess with this in here. I would save something like that for Photoshop, temperature and tint and saturation, as well as brightness. But you can make these adjustments in here. But here's an important one here, the one called grain. And what I recommend here is click on this uh, magnifying glass and then you can zoom in. Now we can just click and drag to the right and zoom way in. What I like to do is add a little bit of grain because whenever you blur anything in Photoshop, you'll totally obliterate any grain that's in there, which will look very unnatural. So what I want to do, I zoom in very close and look at the amount of grain on the girl's face the part that's in focus. And what I want to do is just match that. Now, if I take this grain slider, move it to the right, see the grain that starts to go in there. I'll really drag it over so you can really see it. And it's really realistic photographic type grain. But I'm going to pull it back. There's not a whole lot of grain in this image, so I may give it about, let me see, to keep this realistic, I think maybe about 17 does the trick. And now we could come here you can go to 100%, you can go fit the screen or fill screen. I'm going to go fit the screen. And now we've added that little bit of grain in there, which really helps. And so again, let's take a look. Here is our before and here is our after. And I think the blur has really helped this image. It now has that nice shallow depth of field look. And before I output this back to Photoshop, you still see my crosshatch here. So any one of these areas, remember that depth map, maps out this image okay so if i click on the front of this ledge right here that area becomes the focal point or if i click way back here in the distance that area becomes the area of focus or if i click on the building right here that becomes the area of focus and see the girl's out of focus but if i click on her eye that will make sure she's the area of focus and that is my favorite way of doing it just using this uh, focal point, just click the crosshatch wherever you want that area to be in focus. Wherever you click that, that will definitely be the focal point based on the depth map. And now we have to decide how we want to output this. And if you come down here, see where it says output, this is a drop down. If you click right here, you could put it on the current layer, the new layer. I always like to put this on a new layer. You could do it on a new layer, mass, smart filter, new document, whatever. But I'm just using a new layer. And don't forget, you could just output this as a depth map and use it in a different blur filter if you wanted to. But I'm going to put it on a new layer. I'll click OK. And then that'll bring us back into Photoshop. And here we are. Here's our new layer right here. So let me click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. But I'll tell you, it does a really nice job. Now let's try this iPhone image and see if we can give this a shallower depth of field look. So let me go back up to filter and click on neural filter. And then we're going to click on depth blur. I'll toggle it on and it'll go ahead and start to process this image. Okay, there it is. And you'll notice my flower is out of focus. Let me click on focus subject and see what it finds as the subject. Okay, it's found this flower, probably these flowers right in here. 
okay and if we click on output the depth map we check this on we could see what the depth map looks like yeah see these flowers here this shade of gray these are all in focus right here okay let me go ahead and shut this off and again you can use focus subject or if you check that off you can also like if i definitely want this flower to be in focus say like this area right in here i can click right here but you have to do it up here see where's this focal point you have to click right here and then it will find that area and that will be the area in focus now this looks really nice because this is slightly out of focus here okay you see that and uh, my focal range is way to the left here now if i wanted to bring this flower more into focus i could take this focal range and start to drag it to the right and as i do see how that gets a little more in focus but you know what i like it the whole way to the left i think that looks more I don't know, it just looks a little more artier, if that makes sense to you. But this flower's in focus. This one's slightly out of focus, but that looks good. But check this out. Here's the before. But you can see all these flowers up here have definitely gone out of focus when we see the after. So here's the after. I really like how this foreground leaf is out of focus. Here's the before. It was slightly out of focus, but now after, it's really out of focus. And that looks really good. Now, remember, we can adjust the blur strength as well. So I can take this a little bit further to the right. Give that a little more blur. Yeah, and I do like that right about there. And if you wanted to add some haze, you could drag this to the right a little bit. Make that a little bit hazier back there. Which sometimes a little bit of haze looks good. Sometimes none is better, but in this case, just a little bit, I think, is good. And again, I don't touch temperature, tint, and saturation or brightness here, but I do like to add grain. So I'm going to click on the magnifying glass and left-click and drag to the left. It'll make it smaller. Left-click and drag to the right will make it larger. If you hold your space bar down, that's your hand tool, and then you could pull that around. But I'm just trying to see the amount of grain I want to add here. There's not much grain in this image, so I'll just add just a little bit of extra grain in there. Let me really drag it to the right so you can see. See that grain in there? Now that's way too much. I'm just going to drag it back to somewhere around here. I just want to add a slight amount of grain. And now I'm going to go ahead and click Fit Screen, and now we can see it. And now here is the before, and here is the after. And I think I have too much haze, so I'm going to take this haze and drag it back almost off. I just want maybe just a tiny wee bit of haze in there. And I think we're good. I'm just going to output it to a new layer. I'll click OK. And then that sends us back into Photoshop. Now here is the before and here is the after. But I like it. It has that nice shallow depth of field look. Well, there it is, everyone. That was the Depth Blur Neural Filter in Photoshop. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.